Okay, to get started with my fake it till you make it tres leches, I'm going to be using one box of cake mix. This is the store-bought cake mix, and I'm using classic white because I had that in my pantry, but you can definitely use a vanilla flavored cake or even yellow. I'm also going to add a third cup of oil, one cup of water, which the boxed cake mix does call for, but instead of three egg whites, I'm going to add four large eggs, yolk and white. So now what I'm going to do is just mix all of these ingredients together. And I do want to mention that if you do not want to use boxed cake mix, then definitely make your own from scratch cake. And typically in Tres Leches, you would use a sponge cake recipe. And I can link a sponge cake recipe for you that I have used before. Um, and it does work well in tres leches. But when I don't have time to separate yolks and fluff the white and come up with the recipe or have the ingredients, boxed cake mix is very convenient and it's just as tasty. Okay, so my cake mix is combined well. So now I'm going to put, pour this into a nine by 13 baking dish. This is greased and lined with parchment paper just to ensure that I can get it out of the pan. And I'm going to pour it right in there. Also, if you are going to take your tres leches somewhere or you just don't have a lot of room to put it on a platter the way I'm going to show you how I like to do it, um, you definitely can bake it in like a casserole uh, ceramic baking dish or those glass Pyrex ones. That works really well so you don't actually have to pull it out of the cake pan. You can leave it where it's at. But today I want to show you how I do it when I want to serve it on a platter and not in the pan. So I poured my cake batter in the pan. I'm going to smooth it out evenly and now I'm going to bake it in a preheated oven at 325 degrees Fahrenheit, which is what the, the boxed cake mix actually calls for. Um, and I did have a lovely comment in my last Fake It Till You Make It video, and they did say baking a cake at 325 does ensure a nice, tender, moist cake. So there you go. So into the oven, and I will be baking this for 30 minutes or until a toothpick comes out clean. Okay, and after 30 minutes, exactly, by the way, I'm going to remove the cake from the oven and allow it to cool. You definitely do not want to work with a hot cake when doing tres leches, so I'm going to pull this right out of the oven and I'm going to place it on a wire cooling rack. And I'm not actually going to flip it out of the pan until I can handle it where it's cool enough that I'm not gonna fumble and break it because I have totally done that before. So in the meantime, I'm going to work on the three milks syrup that's going to be poured over the cake or the tres leches part of this recipe. So here I'm using one 12 ounce can of evaporated milk. I'm also going to be using 12 ounces of heavy cream. I actually only have 10 ounces here because I needed the rest for the topping, but I usually use 12 ounces. And one can, this is a 14 ounce can of sweetened condensed milk. Now, the three milks in this recipe, you can use what you have. If I don't have heavy cream, sometimes I like to use whole milk, but I do find that the whole milk is a bit runnier. Okay, and I'm also going to be adding pure vanilla extract, one teaspoon. Now, at this point, you can mix all three of these milks and combine the one teaspoon of vanilla extract, and you're done. But here's what I like to do. So what I like to do is take the evaporated milk and the heavy cream, and I like to simmer it gently and add orange peel and one cinnamon stick. This definitely elevates the three milks in this recipe and it adds such a nice flavor. So if you get a chance, you should do that. And by the way, you wanna make sure you get all the white stuff from the peel off the orange peel, the pith, because that will be bitter. So I made sure to peel off a section of this large orange and that's what I'm going to use to steep in the milk. And I wanted just to give you an idea, this is pretty much the amount that I used. I just kind of skimmed off the zest, the outer exterior of this large navel orange, but you can definitely just use all of the orange. It just depends on your taste. So here what I'm going to do is pour in the evaporated milk in this pan along with the heavy cream.
Now at this point I'm going to go ahead and give it a mix and I'm going to turn on the heat and I am using a low to medium low heat. I don't want to scald the milk, I just want to bring it up to a gentle simmer. Next I'm going to add the cinnamon stick and I'm going to add the orange zest or the orange peel. And now I'm going to wait till my milk comes up to a very gentle simmer, just like this. Then I'm going to shut off the heat and let it steep for about 15 minutes. And then after 15 minutes, I'm going to remove the cinnamon stick and the orange peel. By the way, if you are not making tres leches and you're looking for a new way to add creamer to your coffee, this orange cinnamon combination is so yummy in a cup of coffee. The reason why I know this is because my husband did this while I wasn't looking and it did come out really good. Okay, so I'm going to pour this in a large measuring cup. It'll just make things easier when it's time to pour it on the cake. And I gotta tell you, the smell, the perfume from the orange zest and the cinnamon stick really elevates the Tres Leches cake. Now I'm going to add the condensed milk, the sweetened condensed milk, and this milk that I simmered. It's cool enough to handle, but it's still kind of warm, so it'll make the condensed milk mix better. It'll dissolve better in the rest of the milk. So after I'm done adding this can, I'm just going to combine and mix all of this together. Okay, so now that my milk is done and combined, I am going to show you how I prepare to start soaking the cake. Here I have a platter and you'll notice it has handles on the end. So I went ahead and covered it in saran wrap so any milk wouldn't leak out. That's just my funny way of doing things. This is actually a serving tray that I like to use to serve the tres leches cake on because it is the perfect size. So I prepared the handles so no milk seeps out. Now my cake is cool enough to handle and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. Now typically if you're serving this in the baking dish that you baked it in, all you have to do is just cut off the top, a little bit of the top because that's how the milk is going to be poured over it and it helps the cake absorb the milk. But I'm just cutting off the rounded part of this cake because I'm going to flip it out onto my platter. So I'm not really cutting a big chunk of this. You just want to skim the surface and ultimately you could pour the milk at this point right on top of the cake. But again, I'm going to flip this out onto the platter to make my life easier. And if I didn't cut off that rounded part, the cake would crack in the middle because of the shape. So that's why I did that. So right onto my platter. And yes, I bake this with the tag on the bottom of the pan. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to remove the parchment paper and I don't want to lose any more cake, so I'm kind of skipping a step. You definitely want to trim the top of this cake again because that, again, will help the cake absorb the tres leches. But, I, again, I don't want to trim off this nice, smooth exterior. It's nice and flat, so I'm just going to score it with a plastic knife and hopefully it gets the job done. This is actually my first time doing it this way. Typically, I do go ahead and cut off some of this top to help the milk absorb better but i do i, I do want to have a taller cut of cake so when i take the thumbnail it doesn't look so flat but anyways do what you will so i'm going to score the top here and then i'm going to take a skewer and poke holes okay so once i've poked a bajillion holes in the cake now it's time to pour the milk. And I like to do this slowly so the milk just doesn't spill everywhere. I wanna give the milk a chance to absorb before I start pouring the rest. So you wanna do this slowly. And you'll notice as soon as you pour the milk, it's going to absorb because we poked those bajillions of holes and I scored the top. I did fail to mention that the amount of milk yielded in this recipe should be somewhere between three and a half to four cups of milk. And I only had three and a half right now because I didn't use the full 12 ounces of heavy cream and my husband used some for his coffee. Okay, so my cake is completely soaked. So now I'm ready to cover this. I'm going to use cling wrap and I'm going to store this in the refrigerator. Now, here's the question you have to ask yourself. How much time do you have on your hands? I do suggest if you are rushed, you definitely need to let this cake set for somewhere between three to five hours at minimum. The point of this cake is so the cake has a chance to soak up all of that milk syrup. I am going to store mine overnight or 12 hours. Okay, 
So after I allow my cake to set overnight or 12 hours, let's just say, I'm ready to make my whipped topping. So here I will be using two tablespoons of powdered sugar or confectioner sugar, you might call it. And you can adjust the ratio if you want it sweeter, but two tablespoons works for me. And I'm going to be using two cups of heavy cream or whipping cream. I don't know wherever you live, how they call it. So you definitely want to use an electric mixer. It makes life easier, but I like to do things the hard way. So I'm just going to use a whisk and elbow grease. So in my bowl, I'm going to add the heavy cream and I'm going to whip this or whisk it, whip it until it is in almost the soft peak stage. If I was using my electric mi mixer, I'd probably take it to soft peak stage, but I just want it to be thick, not all the way stiff. And that's when I'm going to sieve in my powdered sugar to make sure there's no lumps or clumps in it. So right about here is a good consistency. So now I'm going to sieve in my powdered sugar. Then I'm going to continue whisking until stiff peaks form and my whipped topping is done. So now I'm ready to frost my Tres Leches cake. It's been setting in the refrigerator for 12 hours and my family is ready to have a slice. So I want to go ahead and remove the cling wrap. I'm going to cover it with the whipped frosting and then I'm going to garnish it with fresh strawberries. You can garnish or don't garnish. The cake is delicious either way. So I'm going to speed things up a bit. Okay, so my cake is done and my kid is ready to try his slice. He's standing right behind me. So I wanna show you what the inside looks like. As you can see, the milk completely soaked into this cake. And of course, it's not a scratch made sponge cake, but it's a very convenient and tasty way to make a tres leches. I certainly hope you guys give this recipe a try. I hope you like it and thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.